So the last thing we need to talk about uh, is how you find the mean and the standard deviation of a binomial distribution. And it, it's just two formulas. All right, I've got them here. They're both fairly straightforward. The mean is NP, and the standard deviation is the square root of NPQ. You, you remember what these are, right? N is the number of trials, and P is the probability of success. Uh, there's the same thing down here in the standard deviation. And of course, Q is the probability of failure, which is just 1 minus P. Now, to, to help you out remembering these, uh, think, think about what NP is. All right, well, N is the number of trials. And I, I know we always call P the probability of success, but remember, probabilities, proportions, they're, they're really kind of the same thing. So that, that P is not just the probability of success, it's the proportion of successes. So when we take the number of trials times the proportion of the trials that are successes, what we're getting here is the total number of successes. It really is uh, just kind of a, a percentage problem. All right, so let's see how we can apply these. Right here, uh, they've got, got basic binomial distribution set up on um, the multiple choice part of the SAT, 44 questions. Each question has four responses, and I want to find the mean and standard deviation of the distribution. Well, the first thing I want you to notice here is there is no mention of the number of successes. Right, that's that's the variable in, in a probability in, an, in a binomial distribution question, right? The, the only parameters in it are the number of trials and the probability of success. So let, let's just apply our formulas. Uh, the mean is NP, that's 44 times uh, the probability of success. That'd be the probability of answering a question correctly there's one correct question for every four so the mean will be 11 right on average we expect a person randomly choosing answers to get 11 of them correct right that's that's a quarter uh, of the total again that kind of fits with the probability right we expect them to get a quarter of them correct and three quarters of them wrong Okay, so how about the standard deviation? Well, that's the square root of NPQ. So that's the square root of 44 times 1 fourth times 3 fourths. And my calculator tells me that this is 2.872. So in this question, we, we can see where the X value comes in, right? We have a, a medical situation. The probability of a successful result is 0.98 or 98.2%. We're doing a trial of 200 patients. And what I'm asking here is it's kind of our classic question. Would it be unusual for 10 patients to experience failure? That's where the X comes in, right? I, I can look at a certain number out of those 200 and say, well, how likely is it for this to happen? Or how unlikely, right? So. Um, now, we have to be a little bit careful here because there's some mixing and matching going on. Right? We were given information about the success rate, but we were asked about a number of failures. Right? You, 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 have, to, you have to really really drill down into the wording here, and it, it's kind of like that, that classic units question. Right, you get a question. You get some numbers in feet and some numbers in inches. You got to be aware of that. This is kind of the statistics equivalent of that situation. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm because I was asked about failed patients. I need to do this in terms of failure. So I'm going to do p equals the probability of failure which is one minus 
0.982. Right, that's 0 0.018. So now I can get my mean. The mean is NP. It's still 200 patients regardless of how we look at it. So this is 200 times 0 0.018, which is 3.6. So on average, if we repeated this experiment with 200 patients over and over again, over time, we would expect the average number of patients experiencing failure to be 3.6. All right, then from here, we can get the standard deviation, right? Sigma is, uh, let's see, the square root of N, that's 200 times P, that's 0 0.018 times Q, which is 0.982, and that comes out to about 1.88. Okay, so now, now I can do my comparison. 10 is, is greater than the mean, right? So I, I'm looking, uh, is it inside or outside of the upper bound? So if I look at mu plus uh, two standard deviations, Right, that would be, let's see, this is 3.6 plus 2 times 1.88, which is 7.36. 10 is greater than 7.36. Right, so 10, 10 is outside of our window. Right, we've got... If you, do a quick sketch. We've got the mean here, 3.6. The mean plus two standard deviations is here. 10 is over here somewhere. Right? 10 is outside of that of that interval. So yeah, I would consider having 10 periods, 10 patients fail to be an unusual result. Um, another way you, you could have approached this, right? An another way you could do this, as a matter of fact, let's do it this way real quick. Um, I could have calculated the z-score for 10 patients, right? Remember how we do a z-score. I'm going to do 10 minus uh, the mean, that's 3.6, divided by 1.88. See, I've got my calculator here. 10 minus 3.6 divided by 1.88. 8, 8, that is 3.40. That's greater than 2, right? That is greater than 2, which means 3.6 is more than two standard deviations above the mean, and we get the same conclusion, right? This is an unusual result. Okay, let's see. One more quick thing I wanted to point out before we go, before we move on. If, if you go back over here to the standard deviation, right? And you look at this calculation. Uh, this was P, and this was Q. Well, let, let's say um, I, I had tried to calculate the mean and standard deviation for the number of successes, right, rather than the number of failures like we did here. Well, what what would happen here? Then the first number would have been. 0 0.0982 and the second one would have been 0 0.018 and we would have gotten the same result right now the mean would have been different right because that 0 0.018 wouldn't be p anymore but it, it, it's just it's interesting aspect of the formula uh, regardless of if you're looking for the average number of excesses, successes or the average number of failures your standard deviation is going to come out the same either way Okay, so this is the end of our uh, conversation about binomial distributions. And in the next section, next series of lectures, we're, we're going to look at another discrete distribution. Right? This time uh, it's going to be something called a Poisson distribution. Right? It's a French mathematician, P-O-I-S-S-O-N. Um, it's quite different. <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite different, you'll see. In, in this situation, it, it, we're, we're thinking about if I have a, a scenario where a, a checkpoint is being passed at a certain rate, right? For example, let, let's say you have um, cars pulling up to a stoplight. 
you know the average number of, or you can measure the average number of cars that go through the light per hour. All right, so then I, I'm going to ask this question. If I know the if I know the average number, I have this distribution. What is the probability that 10 cars go through an hour? What's the probability that 100 cars go through in an hour? Right? Those are the kind of questions uh, that this new distribution is going to let us answer.